Hey guys, thanks for joining me on another episode of Jack's Mechanics. Today we've got a Nissan X-Trail in here. It's a T31 I believe, 2012 model. And it's got a two litre turbo diesel engine in it. Customer complaint of the check engine light. Obviously 331,000 Ks. Just bringing up the fault codes. O2 sensor, range performance, bank one, sensor one. Let's have a look. Bring us some data. Car's running good. Sorry, the video was taking, uh, the scan tool was taking a while to uh, load up, so. Yep, uh, engine speed, airflow, rail pressure. So it looks like somebody's possibly, yeah, been in here previously. So no O2 sensor data in the OBD for us. Just have a look at our freeze frame. That does not look good. Obviously that should not be minus 26 degrees in Australia. So we'll have to go into Nissan. Add a full code scan. See what we got. Coming up in uh, specific air fuel ratio sensor. Switch. And it's the same code as what we had in the OBD. manual transmission so we'll skip over this Not sure if anybody um, in Australia is going to the Auto Care Convention. I think it's in June. Um, I'll be going there. I've got um, some accommodation um, kindly paid for by the automotive technician, and I've got some flights over there and a ticket. So there should be some pretty good training over there. It'll be my first first trip over to Brisbane. Um, yeah, hopefully it's the start of something something awesome. Pretty excited. See a few new new faces, people I've been talking to on online a lot, but yet to meet. So looking forward to that. This is nearly done here. So it looks like we're just 
going to be tackling this um, air fuel ratio sensor issue. The automatic speed control would be the cruise control. Probably a um, code set because of the brake pedal position switch. Obviously, if your cruise is on and you hit your brake pedal, that should that will turn the cruise off. But if there's a potential fault with it, probably not going to let you run the cruise control. Sure, what um, Nissan's um, base voltage is when you have an uh, air fuel ratio sensor, the manufacturers will basically have their own voltages, and um, usually, we want to be looking at current, but that's obviously not in here, so that's not great uh, it's a bit frustrating let's see if I can um, do some research on why this code set P2A00 I think it was or we'll have to bring the code back out um, yeah I'll we'll see if we can do some research and I'll have a, have a look around I mean at the moment the sensor looks to be working sensor looks to be good right now which is typical. Give me two seconds, just do some research and see if I can get back to you. So we're back, um, did a little bit of research. The code sets when the voltage is out of a specified range. Um, car is actually running at the moment. Um, I was just, I got the wiring diagram for the heater. I was about to check the heater. Um, Oh, and it's just come alive. So, I mean, that sensor um, should be alive almost instantly. The it's basically right in the um, after the turbo, so it's very very hot. So even without a heater, you know, it would wake up super fast. It was obviously near on 500 degrees, which is hot enough for it to be working anyway before it even came alive. So. Um, it's a good thing that the sensor is working for us now because that confirms that the sensor, the signal back to the computer and everything is good. Um, we will just um, check for pin fitment issues and uh, also check the heater. We will confirm the heater circuit's working. Um, There it is. Um, this uh, green and uh, pink wire. Um, so I was just, I am, um, I disconnected it from down here, um, and then on this harness side, our pink wire in the middle, and our green wire in the middle there is our heater. So I just printed this offline. So air fuel uh, sensor signal computed by the ECM uh, is out of the specified range. And that's for the P2A00. So I just get the um, the the pins for the connector. Um, we'll just do a pin drag on it, make sure that it's okay on the harness side, and then um, we'll also check the heater, and then we can safely put a sensor in it. 
so we just got our two mil flat and we're just going to go into the connector and just feel for resistance on all the wires you would definitely um, I mean feel that if there was no resistance they're all feeling good so far last one Pin drag is good, so now we'll just put the um, get our wires wired in. I'll wire a um, test light in there. We'll turn it on. Hopefully, it will just turn the heater on. And um, yeah, the job done on this one. I'll call up and see if we can get an oxygen sensor, and uh, we'll go from there. So we're coming through the pink wire um, down the cable through the test through the uh, connection here and through the test site and then back into the green wire or well, green wire and pink wire so hopefully if we turn this on but nothing yet um, Our connections are okay. I'll try it with the scan tool, see if I can turn it on with the scan tool instead. Uh, so, potentially, maybe the fact that I had it disconnected, the um, O2 sensor shut that circuit down, um, or the, you know, the resistance in the globe uh, is different, so it doesn't want to turn the, turn the um, heater on. I tried to go through the scan tool, no bi-directional control, so I thought I'd just plug it back in, ground the test light, just go into the back of them. So just in the back of the pink wire, um, it lights up, and then if we go into the back of the green wire, also lights up. So it tells us that our heat heater is working. It's obviously going through the heater element and coming back out. Um, so that's basically that. I think we'll try and get a oxygen sensor for this one and that should sort this one out so a little bit annoying there's um, no oxygen sensors in the uh, west west of Australia where I am in Perth and um, it's Friday here so that's not gonna happen usually it will take two days so if she decides to even fix it um, I'll we'll obviously um, show the repair and show the after um, I mean it, it's hard because the, the sensor wasn't completely dead it's you know dead dead get maybe a little bit until it got really really hot um, we, we checked that the heater was working we checked pin pin fitment um, yeah not not that great of a video but you know hopefully it helps somebody if it does consider liking consider subscribing and um, yeah we'll catch you in the next one guys take care and we're back with the x-trail um, yeah we've got the new oxygen sensor can't exactly remember where we were at last time in the video um, I think we were just about closing it up yeah it's been a couple of weeks but new sensor going in I'm pretty sure we didn't get it to fault last time um, Nevertheless, we are sure it's a sensor. Um, here's the oxygen sensor part number. No one gonna about to go in. Got it out, came out pretty nice and easy. Comes factory with some anti seize on there. This one's ready for the bin. Um, probably just lazy. Engine light is on now, so I will um, re scan it. Can't remember if the light was on last time or not. Um, we'll we'll rescan it, see if there's any more freeze frame. Um, 
see if we can go over anything. And um, yeah, this one will be this one will be done. Uh, you can't really see much difference between these two. I would have expected maybe more carbon buildup right on the end of it, uh, being right where it is in the exhaust. But I'm often wrong, so. Yeah, I'll pop this one back in. We'll um, have a look in the scanner. So, from what I can remember, uh, air fuel ratio sensor still looking the same as it was before. Obviously, an intermittent issue uh, with you know not not doing its thing before a certain amount of time. Can't exactly remember the um, code setting criteria. It's just been too long in between the first few videos I took and then now this video, but. Yeah, working fine. Still the same fault code for the air fuel ratio sensor circuit. Looking good. Thanks for following, guys. Take care. See you at the next one.